We're going to retest the 87 pound bow with the lighter Cressies because remember in our last test, the 792 grain Cressy was consistently bouncing off the Gamberson. So what I'm going to do is retest this, uh, the lighter Cressies, see if it bounces off and penetrates. But if it does bounce off, we're going to go to the 100 pound bow and to see if then it penetrates with the 100 pound bow just against the Gamberson. So 792 grain, um, 792 grains. 792 grain uh, Hector Cole Cressy. As you saw, as you saw, that didn't even hit the mail and bounced straight off the Gamberson. Uh, whereas the 950 grain Cressy was going through. 950 grain Cressy. 950 grain uh, Cressy. And we're definitely bouncing with the 792 uh, grain Cressy. So definitely, definitely there is a, uh, a relationship between the momentum and the weight of the arrow and the energy it's producing when we're definitely using the same uh, arrowheads from the exact same arrow smith. And that's the bounce. So let's up the poundage. Let's go to 100 pounds. Uh, it probably will be producing with the lighter arrow 80 to 85 joules, whereas with the um, 87 pound bow, the lighter arrow is produced between 60 and 65 joules. So we are looking at a 20 joules uh, difference in uh, energy. Uh, so let's see how we go with that one. 792 grain Cressy with the 100 pound bow against the Gamberson. Definitely stuck in. But again, we're upping the energy here by about 20 joules of energy and that's penetrating. I don't know how far, let's uh, check that out. Okay, so we got it out and we're looking at about 130 mils altogether, but we take away the 10 and a half millimeters for the compressed value of the Gamberson. So we're looking at 119 uh, millimeters, sorry, 119 and a half millimeters past the Gamberson into the foam. Um, we can definitely see, obviously, we're increasing uh, the weight of the bow, increasing the energy by about 20 joules of energy. And from not penetrating the Gamberson, we are suddenly penetrating the Gamberson. So that's, that's good to know. This is a fiberglass bow from Alibo. They call it. Uh, this one comes in at about 80 pounds of my just past 30 bun inch draw yep. length. Yep. That is a uh, my closest thing I did a replica of a Tang to arrowhead from the Qing Dynasty, uh, sometimes known as a, the, the spearhead arrowhead. I've lightly sharpened uh, each edge, not too much. Uh, but they're, they're honed. I've done the yeah. same with my arrows. Honed. honed them. They're yeah. not razor sharp. No. So yeah, to give them a bit of a better chance of penetrating yeah. whatever material we're, we're, yeah. we're trying to hit. is in all right so that one in pretty deep actually so let's measure it up we're here we're at 210 so we're looking at 199 and a half millimeters yeah, past no. the uh the gamson that's in okay so the spearhead uh from the Qing dynasty arrow this one went in even deeper again 242 so we're looking at 231 and a half past the gambeson this is wow. really really destroying the gambeson um so this 80 pound bow it's like the asiatic uh recurve style bows not the h1 but definitely the, the Xing dynasty uh, uh bows definitely are faster for the same poundage uh, than English uh, self bows. Uh, this is performing more like I would say 100 to 110 pound bow in yeah. terms of uh, the uh, penetration we're seeing uh, with these kind of broadheads. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think uh, heavier arrow, much heavier yes, arrow, heavy arrow yes. much stiffer arrow, and yes. uh, drawing it to uh, you know, longer, yeah, so yeah, it's 31 inches yep. as opposed to it's 28. In, correct, it's in contact with the string yeah. longer, so it's accelerating for a yeah, longer time. Absolutely. So, it's definitely faster for the same yeah. poundage but there's a lot of factors yeah. for that uh, storing a lot more energy and the arrow is yep. taking a lot more energy yep um, for sure absolutely awesome thank you for that uh no oscar no really, really appreciate